Russian officials have claimed that Ukraine attacked Crimea Peninsula with US-made Army tactical missile systems Adams, overnight on Monday in an attempt to knock out Kremlin's defense capabilities. Kremlin claimed that six Adams were shot down over the Russian annexed Crimea Peninsula. Sergei Aksionov, the Russian-backed head of Crimea, said Adams missiles were shot down over the peninsula. The Russian Defense Ministry also reported the downing of six Adams, without specifying the location where they were shot down. Ten Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles, six Adams tactical missiles manufactured by the United States and two guided hammer aircraft bombs manufactured by France were shot down by air defenses, the ministry said. Last night, Russian authorities activated air defenses over Dzenkoy and Simferopol as Ukrainian militants conducted a missile strike at the Republic of Crimea, Vladimir Rogov, chairman of the We Are Together with Russia movement, wrote on Telegram. He claimed that Ukrainian troops used several Adakhan's ballistic missiles in an attempt to attack civilians on the peninsula. Meanwhile, Russian MP Leonid Ivlev said Ukraine struck at airbases in Crimea with 12 Adams and added that attacks could increase ahead of President Vladimir Putin's inauguration for a new term that is due to place next week. Their target is airfields. The missiles were destroyed by air defenses, Ivlev told RIA news agency. He said Ukraine was seeking to penetrate air defense shield over Crimea and strike at strategically important facilities. Pro-Russian Rybar Telegram channel claimed 30 missiles had been fired at Crimea in recent days. Pentagon revealed last week that President Joe Biden secretly approved the transfer of the long-range Adams missiles in February for use inside Ukrainian territory. U.S. wants to buy Kazakhstan's warplanes from the Soviet era and give them to Ukraine. Kazakhstan has dismissed reports that it sold dozens of retired Soviet-era warplanes to outside buyers, including the U.S., to be potentially transferred to Kiev for use in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Earlier, the Kiev Post reported that Washington was the winning bidder for 81 of the 117 aircraft, buying them through offshore entities for a combined $1.5 billion. The report didn't give a breakdown of how many planes of each type were acquired, but it said the purchase included MiG-29 fighter jets, MiG-27 fighter bombers and Su-24 bombers. Kazakhstan also offered MiG-31 interceptors in the auction. All the aircraft were listed as being in unusable condition, according to the report, and the costs of modernizing them were deemed economically impractical. The warplanes, which were built in the 1970s and 1980s, were retired under the Kazakh military's modernization program. The average unit cost paid by the US was less than $19,000. In fact, the entire fleet of 81 jets cost only about as much as 10 AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, one of the air-to-surface munitions commonly used by US drones and warplanes. US officials haven't declared how the retired Kazakh planes will be used, the Kiev Post said. Speculation has grown that as the aircraft types are all in service with Ukraine, it is likely they will eventually be transferred to Kiev. If that happens, the newspaper added, Ukrainian forces will likely disassemble the aircraft for spare parts or use them as decoys at airfields. However, Kazakh state defense contractor Kazspec Export dismissed the reports, saying that the auction was organized strictly according to the law and on the premise that all the warplanes would be scrapped for metal. Foreign companies were not allowed to take part in the bidding, it said. Kazakhstan, which is historically a Russian ally, has increasingly engaged with Western nations since the Ukraine crisis began in February 2022. Kazakh President Kasim Yomat Tokayev hosted UK Foreign Minister David Cameron's visit to Astana earlier this month. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken traveled to Astana last year for talks with Central Asian leaders. Regaining control by Ukrainian army over Nestria Island in Kherson complicates Russian advances. Ukraine's control over Nestria Island in Kherson Oblast is tactically important and will make it more difficult for Russian forces to approach Ukrainian positions, Dmitro Pletenchuk, a spokesperson for the Southern Defense Forces, told Hromadsky Radio. 
Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sirsky said on April the 28th that Ukrainian troops had taken control of Nestria Island in the Dnipro River Delta in Kherson Oblast and advanced near the village of Velotensky. Nestria Island was considered a grey zone and is the last in a group of small islands followed by the river mouth, Pletenchuk said, saying that the re-established control holds tactical importance. The regaining of control over the island of Nestria in Kherson Oblast by Ukraine will significantly enhance the quality of counter-sabotage measures by the armed forces of Ukraine, Dmitry Pletenchuk said. Speaking about the island of Nestria, we are not talking about strategy, but about positional battles. It has more tactical significance. Any locations that prevent the enemy from approaching our positions are important. Considering that the enemy usually uses similar locations, there are actually many such islands on the Dnipro River to approach closer and to install mortar, then this is primarily important for the quality of counter sabotage measures. So yes, this location was liberated from the potential presence of the enemy, he said. He added that Nestria is the last in a group of small islands followed by the mouth of the river. Russian troops use locations such as the islands in Kherson Oblast to get closer to Ukraine's positions, the spokesperson added. Actually, it's our shore. In reality, such islands are mostly marshy. It will take a long time to find it on the map, but it's larger than the inhabited spots across from which it is located. For a while, it was considered a grey zone, he said.